This is HSC option three. Uh, sports medicine is the topic and the key idea is how a sports injury is classified and managed. The syllabus dot point this video is focusing on is hard tissue injuries and it's a fairly small dot point just the two dash points fractures and dislocation. Now a bit of an over uh, recap of hard tissue injuries. Now hard tissue injury is any injury involving a bone or teeth. So basically every other type of injury is soft tissue but the hard tissue involves um, bones and teeth. The right hand side of the syllabus talks about how to manage fractures and dislocations with an emphasis on immobilization. So let's get to the first dash point fractures. So we'll start off with the actual definition of fracture. So a fracture is a crack or break in the actual bone itself. Now fractures are caused by three methods, either from a direct injury, which is a high impact injury with another player or the ground surface, or an indirect injury, which is where there's extreme forces placed on the body and the bone fractures, that's pretty uncommon, or an overuse injury, which such as stress fractures. Now the signs and symptoms of fractures, um, no surprise that it's pretty severe pain at the site of the injury. Um, swelling, you can generally see that there's a bit of a deformity compared to the other limb that's been fractured. There'll be generally bruising and also inability to use the limb. Um, there are different types of fractures and you probably need to know at least three of these I would say. Um, closed fracture where this is the bone has been broken but has not actually pierced the skin and this one the nasty one which is either an open or sometimes called a compound fracture where the bone has actually pierced the skin that's no fun. Um, the green stick fracture which is just a small crack in the bone and you've also got a hairline fracture which is more in the stress fracture category and then you've got a, what they call a complicated fracture um, where the structures surround surrounding the actual fracture the, the sorry where the structures surrounding where the fracture occurred also get injured such as the veins arteries and nerves Next dash point is dislocation Now the actual definition of dislocation is when the bone comes away from the joint now this is usually as a result of a direct injury that causes the adjoining bones to no longer align with each other. Now the signs and symptoms of a dislocation include intense pain at the site, unable to move the actual joint. So for example, if it was a shoulder dislocation, um, the athlete would find it very difficult to move the shoulder without feeling pain and also swelling and bruising and also deformity. So those um, those are signs and symptoms. They're pretty similar to what the fracture is as well. Now the last thing to say about dislocation is when a dislocation does occur, whether, uh, whether it be a dislocated shoulder or a dislocated finger, don't be... Um Sorry about that, couldn't resist in all honesty. When a dislocation does occur, don't try to be the big tough person and put the bone back in place. That's a real no-no and should only be done by a trained medical professional as serious nerve damage can occur if the uh, untrained person tries to put it back in place. So we're on the right hand side of the syllabus here um, managing hard tissue injuries. Now there's two dash points the syllabus one should have an understanding of. This bit of an unusual one called assessment for medical attention and then finally immobilization. So I'm going to briefly, briefly talk about how you'd both manage both dislocation and fractures. So with any first aid situation you start off with the acronym DOCTORS ABCD. Now I'm not going to go through this except to say um, it is danger, uh, check for response, send for help, check for airways, check for breathing, perform CPR and finally if defibrillator is available use it. And that's all I'll say about DOCTORS ABCD with the key being check for danger and also send for a response. Um, one of the things you'll have to do perhaps if the bone has actually pierced the skin which is good fun um, is to actually control the bleeding and also when you're doing controlling the bleeding that's all about applying direct pressure. Um, the step three is if the bone is perhaps piercing the skin and you have to and you're applying the pressure there there might be a need to um, treat for shock a number of people including the patient and any people who have perhaps witnessed it um, so in terms of treating for shock it's laying the patient down elevating their feet and keeping them warm step four is about immobilizing the fracture now the aim of immobilizing is to restrict 
um, movement of the actual fracture or dislocation. Now the thing you need to do is support the injury in a manner that is comfortable for the patient. So they will normally put uh, the limb that's fractured or dislocated into a position that's causing them least pain. Don't be tempted to try and straighten it up if they've got it bent a little bit, just leave them how they find it comfortable. Now you need to try and immobilize the joint above and below the injured area using a splint. Now the splint should extend past the nearest joint. A splint can be either um, another limb or a firm straight object. Um, use padding to fill the natural hollows in the body to provide further comfort and stability. Um, certainly apply a cold ice pack as in the ricer principle and then finally apply some cloth between the skin and the ice when you're doing that ice uh, that ice treatment so the patient doesn't get an ice burn. Now the, the final right hand side syllabus is assessment for medical attention. This is pretty straightforward, there's not a lot in it. Um, it's all about seeing a doctor quickly because there is a potential for nerve damage and if that's left too long those nerves can certainly um, get further damaged. Uh, it, it's all about then the R in the last step of the RISA. The doctor's normally going to send you on for referral which is normally all about getting an x-ray. So that's the end of this dot point. I hope you found it helpful. If you need any further information hit the textbooks or see your teacher.